Good morning, Christian Church of Litchfield. Hey, we've got a great turnout today. It's good to see all of you here. If you're visiting with us, we're so happy to have you. And we hope and pray you'll come back and make this place uh, your home and your family as well. Uh, today's a great day. It's an exciting day. It's the opening day of Cardinal Baseball. You know, hey, how about that? They, they play tonight. They, they play tonight at 7.30 at home, open the season, and they play the... Oh, I, for, who, oh, I forgot. I never can think of that name, you know. All right. It gets stuck in my throat. Okay. Now that half of you love me and half of you hate me, you know, we're going to get ready to get into it. Today I'm going to wrap up these messages that... I've been doing on the life and the times in the book of, of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a guy that went through some incredibly difficult, challenging times. In fact, he was just outright persecuted. And so we're going to look at that today, and we're going to see how in the midst of it all, God brought him through it. And whatever you're going through today, Whatever valley you're going through, God is there to bring you through it, and he will if you give him a chance. Okay, we're going to begin today doing something a little bit different. Rather than play Name That Tune, we're going to play Name That TV Series. How many of you recognize these people, this cast? Raise your hand. Don't shout it out when you know the name of it. Next slide. Yeah. Does anybody, does anybody recognize it? What's the name of the show? When Calls the Heart. Yeah, it's on uh, the Hallmark Channel uh, 312 if you got direct TV. If you don't have direct TV, I can't help you. But it's When Calls the Heart. And it's based upon a small town in Canada, a coal mining village. And Another trivia question. Do you know the name of the town upon which th these episodes and since fourth season is, is based? Did I hear it? Hope. Hope Valley. Hope Valley. And what is interesting is when the series began four years ago, it was originally called Coal Valley because there was a coal mining community, C O A L. Coal Valley, but they changed it to Hope Valley. I mean, when you think of a coal mine, you think of a lot of darkness. You think of just going down into the heart of the earth. And uh, in the series, When Calls the Heart, there had been a mine explosion in which over 40 miners lost their lives and it was thought to be because of poor management, some mistakes made by management. And, and over 40 men lost their lives. And so this whole series revolves around people that are struggling. One woman struggles to recover from losing her husband and her son in that coal mine explosion. It shows the struggle of a school teacher. Uh, there's all kinds of relational struggles going on. There is people struggle in Coal Valley to find it to truly be now Hope Valley. By, by the way, another trivia question. Do you know who's been the producer of these uh, series, uh, When Calls the Heart, for the last four years? Uh, executive producer? Anybody know? It won't surprise you probably when I tell you. Michael Landon, Jr. You know, if you've ever watched the show, Sam and I watch it, it's a lot like his father's productions, you know, of Little House on the Prairie. Well, now you got a little community. Uh, he took it based upon a book, and he, he did a series on it. And you can certainly see his dad's uh, uh, coming through uh, his production uh, as well, because we watched all of 
Michael uh, Landon's productions. Now his son produces this, this series. That's what I want to do for you today is take you from Coal Valley, where it, all you see is darkness, and you think, I'm just sinking into the heart of the earth. I'm going under. And when you leave here today, you'll truly know it's Hope Valley because of the faithfulness of, of God. Just think about the headlines on the news, whether you get it online or whether you get it on TV or on the radio or in the newspaper. Doesn't it just go from bad news to more bad news, from one disaster to another disaster, from one tragedy to another tragedy? There's a hurricane. There's a tsunami. There's an earthquake. Uh, there's a flood, there's a fire, there's a war, uh, there's a terrorist attack, there's a disease. It just goes from one disaster and tragedy to, to another. But most of it you don't see on the headlines. Most of it occurs in the homes and within the heart where a doctor will write on a lab report, cancer. Where a judge signs his name to divorce papers. To where a struggling single mom dreads to open the mailbox knowing there'll be more bills than there is money to pay them. And we could go on and on of all the challenges that, that, that we face. And sometimes it just seems like there is no hope. I understand that. I get it. I got called to do a funeral this week for a man 51 years old who didn't know of a Hope Valley, evidently. And, and, and he took his life. I've done probably a half a dozen suicides. And they have ranged all the way from a young teenage girl to those who are older than I am. It doesn't matter what age you are, people struggle to find hope. And if you're struggling today, I'm really glad you're here because there is a hope valley. And that's what Jeremiah finds, and that's what Jeremiah experiences. And today we're going to see that Jeremiah didn't just write the book of Jeremiah. He also wrote the book of Lamentations. Exactly. And when you look at the title, it's not an encouraging title. Lament. We all know what lament. What's another word for lament? <laughs> Boo-hoo. Cry. Weep. Tears. Yeah. Lament. Lamentations. And it's in Lamentations that he pours out, Jeremiah does, his, his heart to God. As I've been reading through it this week, I'm just overwhelmed with the burden that, that he carried. Uh, it wasn't an easy life. And in Lamentations, you're going to find that he goes into detail of some of the things that we've already covered of the events in his life. But he goes in more detail. How personally... He suffered and he wept. What happened to him when he was placed in the cistern? We talked about that in a sermon. Well, gives a little bit more detail on how he was feeling. You know, it's like a news report. Hey, how, how do you feel after the, they lose the, uh, the World Series? So that, uh, you know, the guy struck out with bases loaded. You know, how do you think he feels? Well, Jeremiah goes in. He says, I'm glad you asked the question. And he goes into detail explaining how he really felt. And he said, not only did they put me down the pit, they threw rocks on top of me. I thought it was the end. I cried out to God, but he heard me. Oh, you just read of that time and time uh, again. And so today we're especially going to look at chapter 3. We don't even have time to look at the whole chapter. But we're going to begin by looking at the first six verses. And this is Jeremiah being real. He's not telling you... Uh, you know, uh, the power of positive, he says, 
this is my life. And it's pretty painful. I don't think anybody here would say, it. I'd like to trade places with him. Here we go. Jeremiah 3. We'll pick it up with verse 1. I am a man who has suffered greatly. And that's the absolute truth. He's not negative. He's not being morbid. He's being honest. The Lord has used the Babylonians to punish my people. And later on in Lamentations, he says, I have cried a flood of tears over the destruction of my people. So even though he was physically persecuted, his greatest pain was seeing what others were going through because they didn't live in Hope Valley. They refused to come into Hope Valley. They lived in Cole Valley. They were doomed. They were going under. They are going to be destroyed. There was nothing but darkness for them. And he says, I especially weep when I think of all the women, the helpless women, all that they're going to, it's going to happen to them when the Babylonians come in because they didn't surrender. Jeremiah told him, surrender and all will go well. You know, he says, God told me. But if you don't, they are, there's, there's going to be bloodshed, blood running in the middle of the streets like you can't imagine. And that's what happened. And so here's a prophet who is just broken over people that have rejected the word of the Lord. The Lord has used the Babylonians to punish my people. He's driven me away. He has made me walk in darkness instead of light. Now that doesn't sound like Hope Valley. That sounds more like Coal Valley, doesn't it? He has turned his powerful hand against me. He has done it again and again all day. Here's the guy that doesn't sound like yeah, he's ready to sing uh, hallelujah, thine the glory, you know, praise be to God. Um, he says, God's been really tough on me. Okay, let's, let's read on. He has worn out my body. He has broken my bones. He has surrounded me and attacked me. He has made me suffer bitterly. He has made things hard for me. He has made me live in darkness like those who are dead and gone. You say, that's Hope Valley? No, that's Cold Valley. But his life story isn't over. He's telling you, you think you're struggling today? I understand it. Maybe you think I as a preacher don't. And I get that. That's okay. I may not. Probably don't. But this guy, don't you point your finger at him and say, Jeremiah, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what a bad week I've had. I wouldn't trade places with him. And so he's just saying, this is how I actually feel. I just feel like God's abandoned me. God's put me through it. And you're saying, now God didn't do that to him. Well, in, in a way, he, he did not, obviously. God doesn't punish people like Jeremiah for doing what God's asked him to do. But in a way, it's because of God, isn't it? Because when he decided to follow God and accept his call to be a prophet and to preach to his people, then all these things came as a result of it. So that's why he is saying, God, you've really made my life hard. Following you has not been easy for me. And um, that's why I just love Jeremiah. Well, we're going to break it down to two main sections today. And here we go as we start out. The first is a chapter. A chapter in every life is lived out in Hope Valley. Some of you are thinking, <laughs> it's not just one chapter for me. My life story, every chapter is in the valley. And at times, it may seem that way. But even for Jeremiah, that wasn't always the case, though there was a lot more than one chapter uh, lived in Hope Valley. Uh, but uh, we're going to see that uh, brought out. Now, there's something to understand about the valleys when you're going through them. Some of you are there today. Some of you are coming out of one. And others of you are saying, things are going great for me. That means you're probably getting ready to go into one at some point. I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but isn't that probably pretty true. You're either in one, coming out of one, or going into one, you know. Um, that's, that's pretty much life. It's a land of hills and valleys. Okay, here we go as we look at the valleys. Valleys are inevitable. You can't say, 
I'll take a pass on that. I'm, I, I'm not going to sign up for that course. It's a required course. No one is exempt. And, and we all have to go through them. You may say, well, if I had enough money, I could avoid a lot of them. No. You probably find yourself in more valleys if you had a lot of money. You say, well, if I was popular and people liked me, you know, I, I, it'd be wonderful and I wouldn't go through any valleys. Oh, yeah, you'd probably go through a whole lot more valleys than you are right now, being a nobody. If, you're, if you have any age at all, just think about the number of people that have taken their life, that everybody looked up to, that idolized in Hollywood as an actor or as an actress or a singer or whatever, and you say, look at them, everybody... I couldn't begin to count the number of people in my lifetime that were idolized. Well, I wish I could be like them. And they're saying, man, I live in Cold Valley, not Hope Valley. They come to everybody. Here's some scriptures I want to share with you. Jesus says it this way. So let's just listen to what Jesus said. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In Jesus, you can have peace. In this world, you, some of you may have a little bit of trouble, right? That's how it reads, right? No, get my glasses on. In this, you read it, all right? Oh, yeah. In this world, you will have trouble. That's what Jesus says. But he says, you can still have peace. It can be a Hope Valley, even though he said, I'm writing these things. That's why we have to immerse ourselves into the Word of God and into the teachings of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John every day. I try to make a part every day of my life to read part of the Gospels so that in a troubled world and in a troubled life sometimes, I can have peace because of Jesus. I can even have joy, even though I'm going through a valley experience. In this world, you have trouble. There's another one. I'll let you read this one, okay? Everybody is going to go through a valley. Good people go through valleys. Bad people go through valleys. Good people have sunny days. Bad people have sunny days. It's just, God doesn't discriminate. And say, hey, if you're good, uh, we'll give you a pass on the valley. He says, you know, the only difference is how you respond to him. That's the only difference. They come to everybody, Jesus says, two occasions that he emphasizes what Jeremiah's experienced. Secondly, okay, here we go. Valleys are unpredictable. They're unpredictable. Uh, you can't schedule them. You can't plan them. Think about it. They usually come at the most inopportune time. Is there ever a good time to have a flat tire or a car break down on the highway? I mean, really. Have you said, boy, I'm glad. I'm right here in the middle of rush hour traffic in St. Louis when the car broke down, the tire went flat. You know. And they usually come in, 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 in bunches. And usually I hear people say, and I've said many times, I don't have time for this. You know, it's just not really good to be going into a valley right now. Uh, I'm already in one. And I don't need to sink any lower. But uh, Jeremiah knew all about it. Here we go. Jeremiah 4.20. Disaster follows disaster. The whole land lies in ruins. In an instant, my tents are destroyed. My shelter in a moment. What's Jeremiah saying is this. We've all found out how a really good day can become a really bad day in a heartbeat. Isn't that true? In the matter of the blink of an eye, you think, man, this is a good day. And one phone call and your life's turned upside down. Honey, it's me, Mom. It's your dad. Your life's turned upside down. You answer the phone. They say, there's been an accident. You need to go to the hospital. <laughs> You're having a great day. But one disaster just seems to follow 
another, a knock on the door, a letter in the mailbox. And your life, that was such a good day, turns into a nightmare all on the same day. Jeremiah said, man, I know all about that. Okay, here we go. Listen to James 4. He says, listen carefully. Those of you who make your plans and say, we are traveling to this city in the next few days. <laughs> he says, the reality is you have no idea where your life will take you tomorrow. Valleys change lives. And they're unpredictable. And James, inspired by the Holy Spirit, says, you got your plans, but I want to tell you, God can change them in an instant. Okay, let's go ahead and look and see that valleys, though, are purposeful. They do have purpose and meaning. They're not in vain. They will accomplish something. So therefore, uh, we may not welcome them, but we'll learn that that's where we really grow up, and that's where we mature, and that's where we develop, hopefully, some Christ-likeness. Here's some scriptures I want to look at. James 1 says, Don't run from tests and hardships, brothers and sisters. As difficult as they are, you will ultimately find joy in them. <laughs> You say, yeah, right. <laughs> having, when's that joy come, preacher? <laughs> Are we having fun yet in this valley? Uh, yeah. If you embrace them, your faith will blossom under pressure and teach you true patience as you endure. Oh, I want to tell you, Jeremiah grew. He came to know God in the valleys, like few of us will ever get to know, know God. It takes you to school. It takes you to graduate school. Man, you get your doctor's degree in, in growing up fast when, when you go through the valleys of life. Okay, let's look at one more. First Peter 1 Peter 1.7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire test and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So your faith is very important. It's very precious. And God says, man, I want you to shine brighter than ever. And when you come through it, you think you're pretty beat up. But actually, your life's so valuable because you've held on to faith. And that's a choice you always have. And if you hold on to your faith, you'll always live in Hope Valley. You give up your faith, you go back to Cove Valley. It's darkness, and it's a dead end. Let's move on. Last one. Hallelujah. Valleys are temporary. They're temporary. They don't last forever. That's the good news. Let's look at some scriptures that... Talk about that. Psalm 30, verse 5. His wrath, you see, is fleeting, but his grace lasts a lifetime. The deepest pains may linger through the night, but joy greets the soul with a smile of morning. They don't last. Now, let's go on to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. For our present troubles are small, won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that will vastly outweighs them and will last forever. David said in Psalm 23, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He doesn't say, this is where I'm going to live the rest of my life. He says, I'm on a journey. I'm walking through that valley. I'm going through a valley, but I'm walking through it. And some of you are saying, well, wait a minute. I know, I know some people. I have some loved ones. And I want to tell you, that their, their valley didn't go away. It lasted all through this life. And they died, and they were in the valley. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 4, though, answers that, didn't it? It said, our light and momentary troubles. You know, our present troubles, not worthy of being compared to the glory that's going to be revealed. So they're temporary as far as this life this lifetime, if they last a whole lifetime, that's not even a dot on eternity. So in that sense, they're still temporary. Even though through this life, you may be in that valley 
forever, it seems like. But David says, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But later he says, at the end, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, Jeremiah 3, 18 through 20, Jeremiah says, I cry out, my splendor is gone. Everything I had hoped for from the Lord is lost. You say, are you sure we're going to end up in Hope Valley? I think this guy's gone back to Coal Valley. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. Are you really understanding this isn't a guy just writing words saying, I don't know what they mean, they're not my life. This is coming from the heart. Imagine if you wrote these words, what your life would be like. My splendor is gone. Everything I'd hoped for from the Lord is lost. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I'll never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. That's why I love the Bible. It is so honest and so, so real. God doesn't gloss over it. Jeremiah, let's not tell people that. It'll discourage them. I don't know about you, it encourages me when I read what Jeremiah went through. I'm encouraged because I think, okay, Jeremiah found hope even when he thought he was losing it. He was walking through it at its lowest point. It's a real test. Will you lose it or not? But he did it. Jeremiah did it. Now, let me say something before we go on any further in this message. We're going to talk about how he found a genuine hope in God. What I'm not talking about here, I'm not talking about, you need to be an optimist. You know, don't be a pessimist. You need to to live out the power of positive thinking. I'm not talking about that, okay? Uh, Though I'd much rather be around an optimist than a pessimist. Optimists live longer, and while they live, they're a lot happier than those who are pessimistic. Uh, so, but we're not talking really uh, uh, about that. You know, a lot of it is, is just our attitude and how we, we look at things. You know, um, I remember several years ago when Roger Quarton was here as our associate minister. You have to understand, Roger had been on the mission field, uh, had been in Argentina for a number of years, and uh, his heart uh, was, was in missions, and, and still is. A good friend, always will be, just a guy that incredibly loves the Lord. I'll never forget, one morning, we were getting ready to do staff meeting, and for some reason, none of us had eaten breakfast, uh, I guess we were talking and that, and uh, we said, hey, there's some donuts left from Sunday. So the two gals picked them up. There were two secretaries at that time. One of them got one, brought them in my office. We sat down, got our coffee, and we opened the box of, uh, of donuts. And there were ants crawling all over those donuts, you know. Eee! You know, that's what the girl said. They slammed the box shut, and one of them goes marching through the uh, Roger's office, through the kitchen, out the door into the dumpster, open the dumpster, threw them in the dumpster, came back, said, so much for the donuts. So we go ahead and we do staff meeting. My staff meeting is over. I'm in my office working, and one of the gals comes into my office and says, Steve, would you look out your window? And I look out my window, and I see Roger. I didn't know it was Roger, but I saw the dumpster was opened, and there was feet hanging up, and somebody was hanging down in the dumpster. You know, and pretty soon, up popped Roger, and he had that box of donuts, and I saw him open them up and brush them off and and take them and put them in his car, you know. And they go, I can't believe it. So Roger came in, we're just standing there, and we're looking at him, and the girl says, Roger, did you? I said, probably taking him home for his dog. Roger says, I don't have a dog. I said, well, maybe you're going to get one. And... uh, (laughs) Roger said, no. He said, I'm taking him home to eat. And the girls go, oh, eat. They're no good. They had ants crawling over them. He said, man, if you'd seen some of the meals I've eaten. He says, I've worked with people that has never seen a donut in their life. What's disgusting to you here in America is a delicacy for most of the rest of the world. Boy, 
That puts things in perspective. Now, I will be honest. The next two or three days when he came in, we were watching him real closely to see if he'd get sick and die, you know. But uh, he didn't. He didn't get sick at all. He was healthy as a horse. And, uh, you know, so uh, sometimes our problems are just, we, we've been really spoiled. And the least little thing, a few ants can just run something, you know. And uh, Jeremiah would say, grow up, man. You don't even know what problems are if that's what you're worried about. Ants on donuts, you know. Uh, that's, that's not what it's all about. So here we move on today as we get ready to wrap it up. It's in Hope Valley that we meet a faithful God. In that TV series, When Calls the Heart, it's all about relationships. And there are some people that are really hurting, and they'll meet somebody really nice, and you begin to see love blossom and grow. And, and uh, if you're a romantic, uh, you'd love the series, you know. And some are breaking up. I mean, it, you know, some are challenged. And, but today we're talking about it's in the valley that you really come to know God, and you'll see that he truly is faithful. And that's what Jeremiah is going to say. We've looked at the first part of chapter 3. Now let's read on today as we get ready to go into it. Lamentations 3, 23, 24. Lord, how faithful you are. By the way, it's this passage that was the basis for the song that we just sang. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There's no shadow of turning with thee. All I've needed your hand has provided. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Lord, how faithful you are. I say to myself, the Lord is everything I will ever need, so I will put my hope in him. You say, wait a minute, is this the same guy that in the same chapter earlier? Yeah, yeah, it's the same guy. He's struggling, and he was struggling, and he was having a bad day. And his emotions, you can't always control them. They were really, really in Cove Valley. But his faith would bring him back to Hope Valley. And that's where we go today. Okay, here we go. Number one, God's love, first of all, is inexhaustible. If, if you're in Cove Valley today and you're struggling, let me tell you, understand, no matter what valley you're going through and how dark it is, it can become a hope valley because God's love is inexhaustible. There's a limit to pain and suffering. There's no limit, no limit to the love of, of God. It's inexhaustible. Here's what he says. Gaining hope, I remember and wait for this thought. How enduring is God's loyal love. The eternal God has inexhaustible compassion. It just never runs out. And I like that word that's used in this translation, compassion. It means God feels exactly how you're feeling. He felt exactly how Jeremiah was feeling. He didn't say, boy... I don't know, it must really be bad. God's saying, I'm hurting just with you. I'm there with you, and I'm hurting the same as you are. What, a, what an awesome, faithful God we have. Okay, secondly, God's mercies. I love this. They're fresh daily. They're not stale saying, I give you the same old blessing, and that's all I give you. He, he just ambushes us with new blessings every day, no matter what how bad the valley's experiences are. Here we go, Lamentations 3, 22, 23. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Every day, even in the valley, God will reveal some mercies and his grace and a blessing. You don't have to say, you know, God's abandoned me and there's no mercy and there's no grace and there are no blessings until I get out of this stinking valley. You don't have to do it. Every day, no matter how dark the valley, there'll be new mercies that God's going to be revealing to you every day. Open your eyes and see them. They're fresh, man, every day. Okay, thirdly, God's goodness will ultimately triumph. It looks like the Babylonians, and by the way, the Babylonians were not a good, good people. They, they, they were not a godly group of people. They were ruthless. They were barbaric. They, they specialized in, in human torture beyond words. And Jeremiah just, and the people would wonder when the blood would begin to run through the streets of Jerusalem. 
Are they going to prevail? Not a chance. God's goodness will ultimately, ultimately, maybe not today. May, you may look at the headlines today and say, doesn't look like God's winning the battle. Oh, yeah. His goodness is going to triumph in the end. Here's some scriptures we want to look at and get ready to wrap it up. My soul boasts, hope in God, just wait. Wait. Give it some time. It is good. The eternal one is good to those who expect him, to those who seek him wholeheartedly. It is good to wait quietly for the eternal God to make things right again, and he will. You say, man, life isn't fair. People get away from murder. <laughs> no, they don't. He will make things right. Justice will prevail. God is going to triumph, and his goodness is going to triumph over evil. Don't judge it by the headlines today. Don't judge it by your valley today. Give God a chance to finish his work. It will triumph. Another scripture I think we've got here is in Revelation eleven fifteen. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world, <laughs> they're gone. The powerful kingdoms, are you think, man, these people rule forever. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he, Jesus Christ, shall reign forever and ever. That's our hope, folks. And when you walk with God, you can't lose the battle of life. You just cannot lose the battle of life when you walk with God. You know, it's interesting, and the archaeologists have found in the catacombs uh, there in Rome all kinds of symbols for the, for the Christian faith, fish symbols we're very familiar with, and the shepherd. But one that was very interesting was there's an anchor. An anchor. Yeah. And it was a place where Christians would hide from persecution. It's also a place where they would bury their dead. And a lot of times the epitaphs on, on, on those that they buried in their, their names and that, they had beside it an anchor. And you're thinking, an anchor? Why the symbol of an anchor for those who have died? being persecuted for their faith. Why? Hebrews 4.16 says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, steadfast and sure. And I'll tell you why they could use that anchor that wouldn't give way even through death. Because Jesus Christ, the one we put our faith in and our hope in, has gone through that valley of death. And he has come out on the other side of life. And he says, because I live, you too shall live. We're going to sing our invitation song, our hymn of decision. And uh, if you want to decide today to follow Jesus, it's the only way you're going to win the battle of life. It won't exempt you from the valleys. You may have a few more because of it. But ultimately, you will win and you will triumph. If Jeremiah could speak today. And we'd say, Jeremiah, tell us about all the tough days you had. I think he'd say, you know, I don't really remember the tough days because it's just so wonderful being up here with the Lord and his people and the other prophets. Uh, the foretaste of heaven is so glorious. It just far outweighs. It just wipes away the memories of all those tough times. They may last for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, a few decades, maybe a lifetime. But that's nothing compared to eternity. Let's stand and sing.